Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here, and I want to do a quick tutorial on the basics of a learning objective. Many of you are starting into an educational program for the first time, and we're always saying objectives, objectives, objectives. They drive everything, and they're getting measured in your lesson plans. But we never really slow down a second to unpack them, and why do we have them? What's the goal of an objective? Well, <laughs> right there, the objective is to meet the goal. Um, when it comes to learning, you have to think about your students. Really, when it comes to learning objectives, it is your chance to let students drop the mic. And that's the purpose of this video, is to learn the basics of learning objectives by describing how they must be measurable and dependent and criteria-based. Let your students drop the mic with the learning objectives. So let's break that down. Measurable. What does that mean? Well, we never know what someone truly knows. And when you create a learning objective, you have to figure out some way to, to just kind of evaluate the residue of their understanding, something they maybe put down on paper, or if they built a project, or if, if, you know, if they built a project and it has to reach a specific bits of compliance. That's, that's residue of understanding that you can measure. But when it comes to learning objectives, it's hard to measure or understand. Think about it this way. I could say, understand the causes of the Industrial Revolution. List the causes of the Industrial Revolution. If I gave 10 people that task, and then I asked 10 other people to assess that task, I could easily train up a group of assessors to tell me whether people had two out of three you know, requirements of uh, that listed causes to the Industrial Re uh, Revolution. If you say, does this person understand the causes of the Industrial Revolution? Well, that's, you know, that's hard to measure. We can't measure what it means to, to really to understand. No is the same way. You never know what someone truly knows. So you can't say things like, know the history. You need to be able to say, um, you know, explain, evaluate the historical events compared to another event. So you need to make sure that it is a measurable. Independent. Objectives need to be independent. And what do we mean by that? Not like 4th of July, but um, in a way that if you're like, we call it like say a fishing net. And if you wanted to just catch one type of learning with that objective, if you cast that net out into the ocean, it would only pull back that one kind of fish. So you would write an objective, um, uh, correctly add and subtract. Why? Well, because then you have to make to to be a fit to you know to show master and the objective. You have to show that you can add and subtract. And then as a teacher, I don't know where you went wrong, so then I can't develop a way to help you. So you're better off to have two objectives: add correctly three out of five times, subtract correctly three out of five times. Um, and there, you know, there I even add the condition, but we'll talk about that in a, a bit. But you want to make sure that every objective just measures one thing. And then finally, it needs to be criteria based or condition based, like I just talked about three out of five times. And where do we get criteria? Well, that's where you have to break learning down into like nouns and verbs. So go back to our example of the Industrial Revolution. List the causes of the Industrial Revolution. What's the knowledge there, the topic, the nouns? Um, the Industrial Revolution, that's the concept. Uh, and causes, the causes of the Industrial Revolution is really like the noun, what they need to know. But what do they need to be able to do? The verb, list. So they have to be able to list the causes. Now I know the criteria that they're being measured upon. And I could make that, you know, time-based, you know, after, after reading a chapter, list the causes of the Industrial Revolution. I could add a condition to my criteria. List two out of three causes for the Industrial Revolution. And oftentimes you might have, you know, that kind of criterion-based measurement after the objective is still to, you know, to, to list, to, to demonstrate mastery, and that's to list criteria of the Industrial Revolution. But you, what you're counting as mastery is two out of three. Um, so there is that difference between how you use those measurements for criteria. And that's really the best way that we can think about our objectives is, is to use the drop mic approach, make it measurable, independent, and criteria-based. 
So let's go look at an example. It's different from a standard, and we're going to talk about that in another lesson. But I want you to look at the number of standards that they say that a lesson is hitting. Just because a lesson might be hitting those standards doesn't mean that you're actually teaching them. I often prefer not to even list a standard unless the lesson is specifically assessing some a, an objective um, impact from that standard. And that is what we're going to do in the next video. But let's look at this objective. All right. Students will listen to a beautifully illustrated picture book read out loud and use literacy skills, reading, writing, discussion, and listening with an attention to vocabulary and illustrations to understand the central message of the pictures. Whoa. There are like 4,000 objectives in that lesson objective. You know, um, you need to be able to understand the central message. Remember, we already talked about understand. That's a sloppy measurement word. Beautifully. How, how is it, you know, so now we get to decide who decided something's beautifully illustrated. Um, are, they, do they, are we holding them accountable on, on whether that is beautiful to them or not? So it says here we need to show how they, so we need to demonstrate that they can listen. We need to, um, that they need to use listening, uh, reading, writing, discussion, and listening skills when they're listening. Um, that they pay attention to vocabulary and illustrations. I don't know how we're going to measure attention. And then understand. So, you know, there's a lot there that you really can't unpack. Let's go look at another example. Here's, uh, you know, students will construct a boat that floats. All right. I know that a student construct the boat that floats. It has the, here's the criteria. Can they construct a boat? Does the boat float? So the verb is construct. You know, the knowledge is around the boat and the criteria is around floating. Students will present the process of construction and revisions needed to get their boat to float. So there to be successful, all we have to measure then is do they present? You see the conditions there? It's just did they present or not? Um, so you might, and they did talk a little bit about criteria that they that they include revisions needed. So you might want to say and summarize something a little bit more measurable there.